your school, your school board, and say, you know, I looked on the web page and I didn't see any core values at all. Can we start with something? Can we start with God and country? Couldn't we do that? I don't see why we shouldn't be able to. And then a teacher said to me, you know, whenever you mention God, you may be offending an atheist or a Muslim. And I'm saying, well, what about my offense? Why, why, why doesn't my offense count? If I'm offended, why doesn't my offense count? And she said to me, because you're part of the silent majority. And when you're silent, your offense doesn't count. And I'm letting you know that's true. That's absolutely true. So it's time we start speaking out. It's, star it's time we start not being silent anymore. If you're offended, speak out and let people know your offense. Yeah. December 7th, 1941. Everybody knows the day, but very few people know the lesson of that day. When we were attacked on that day, America had 350,000 troops in uniform ready to defend our country. Germany had six million men in uniform and Japan had eight million men in uniform and we almost lost that war because we had to put 16 million men in uniform to defeat those armies and we almost lost because we were so unprepared. And the lesson was that we're now in Afghanistan and Iraq trying to keep our enemies small with 150,000 troops and keep the war in their backyard. Would everybody have felt better if we waited till we needed a million troops or two million troops or 16? million troops. Well, now that you know the lesson of World War II, that looms large, and 150,000 isn't so bad anymore. It's just the, now we have to argue what's the method that we go about doing what we're doing in Afghanistan and Iraq, which is a different story. So basically what you see your message is to the students and people here today is, is what? what? How would you sum it up? Core values. Let's get back to God and country. Let's get back to uh, what made this country great. It's the taxing and the government, the expansion of the government is unreal. It's, it's, it's unsustainable and how can we pay for all this? 
the, he keeps hiring more government worker, more government workers, and and our our regular businesses are disappearing. You go down in Hackensack, all the businesses are closed. It's it's terrible. Anywhere you go, you'll see all the stores closing. I would like to ask a question. How many of you think that we're winning? Not a single hand. I was on the phone with somebody last night down in D.C. because a lot of our candidates won back in November. And I got to tell you, battle by battle, we are winning. You can see it on Politico yesterday. The union bosses are freaking out about the budget cuts. The left is freaking out about the budget cuts. As far as fighting the left, uh, and you will find this the more you engage, just know they are loud, they are obnoxious, just like we saw in Wisconsin. But as loud as obnoxious as they are, they have glass jaws, and if you hit them with the truth, they will shatter. So that is what we need to do. In 1975, our father, Frank Connor, was killed by the FALN terrorists in New York City. In 1999, we felt the pain and injustice of President Clinton's clemency grant to those same unrepentant FALN terrorists who claim my father's murder. My brother and I, I witnessed the 9-11 attacks having commuted through the Trade Center that morning and we lost our cousin who is a fellow Bergen County resident. Most recently, I testified against Eric Holder at his confirmation hearing a couple years ago, only to have him, thank you, only to have Holder confirmed, unfortunately. Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. It is not passed to our children through the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them for them to do the same. Now it's our time to fight. Thank you. You have such a personal story to tell, and it's heartbreaking. But if you could just share with us what, um, you know, why you're here and how you're involved. Sure. Um, you know, my father was killed by a Puerto Rican terrorist group, the FALN, when we were kids in 1975. Um, Bill Clinton released those terrorists from prison. Um, they hadn't requested the clemency. They were, they were granted it in 1999. Eric Holder was his deputy attorney general at the time, and what has what has turned out is that it was a, an alliance between Holder and Hillary Clinton that pushed the uh, these ter these terrorist releases through. It was it for the votes? It was for the Hillary's votes, and and uh, Holder has always had a sympathy for FALN terrorists certainly, and terrorists I believe in general. Yeah, that's right. Didn't he um, his firm represent terrorists before he came to the Obama White House? Yeah, they have been, and um, I, I can People have asked me why. Why Holder supports the terrorists, I don't know. I don't. I can't look into the man's heart. All I know is that he has supported it, and he seems to agree with their causes. And so that's really, you know, such a devastating thought to lose your dad at such a young age. And then you talked about losing your cousin in yeah. the World Trade Center. Yeah, 9/11. You know, I I worked downtown and um, at the time, and um, Steve worked for Kenner Fitzgerald, and he grew up in Saddlebrook and lived in Franklin Lakes. Um, that morning, I was commuting with my brother, as I did every day. And Tom works for the different company than I do, and I went my way and he went his, and I watched out the window as the planes hit the buildings and saw the people jumping, and I called Steve and uh, couldn't get through to him, so I called his cell phone. And, uh, you know, I didn't know which tower he was in, you know, one or two, who knew? Um, and I was hoping he was in the South Tower when the North one was hit first, but uh, he was in the North Tower and no one ever heard from him. Dear, I'm so sorry. That was, that was my father's godson. So to have two family members to kill by terrorists in such a short... Within blocks, within blocks of each other. Francis Tavern is only a few blocks from the World Trade Center. And people talk about the Tea Party like it's some sort of crazy people. And, we're, you know, we're just people trying to keep the country under control. And uh, it's just a good bunch of people trying to do what's right. And, uh, you know, and the media put, portrays us to be some sort of racist or KKK. And... It's crazy. We're just normal Americans. The government that governs least governs best, according to Thomas Jefferson. I think he's a lot smarter than a lot of people that we have in Washington right now. Well, number one, it's the economy. We've got to create jobs. And the way to do that is to get 
entrepreneurs out to work to be able to create those jobs, which they can't do if they're being overtaxed. The other thing is the war on terror and what's going on overseas. Those two things combined are very important to us. Next time, come out and see what it's like. You'll see that these Tea Party people are good people. They're hard-working people. I have it in their heart that they want the best for this country. You are not a conservative leader if you financially supported the likes of Chuck Schumer, Anthony Weiner, and Barack Obama. The presidency is not an experiment for the next reality show. Our movement will provide moral support to those that pledge to uphold our Constitution and resolve to dismantle the monstrous government that strangles us at every turn. Our freedom is at stake. And in the words of Thomas Paine, those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. We are vigilant and we say loud and clear, and we'll say it all year, lead, follow, or get out of the way. God bless you. This is the time, this is the moment. If you don't stand up now on your principles, when are you going to ride? Ride the wave is. When are you going to do it? So this is the time to do it. And Boehner needs to man up. <laughs> he needs to man up. I am an immigrant from Europe who did not come 4,000 miles or did not travel 4,000 miles to exchange one set of socialist values for another. I came here to embrace the spirit of our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and the culture that America has exported and the freedom that it has exported since its founding. And we're here today because we have lost our way. Um, I am Irish by birth, but American by the grace of God.